and we're only meeting for one very strict hour. Oh, you got a kiss. Did you kiss your dog viewers? Did you kiss your dog viewers? Did you? Did you? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tara East. I'm a researcher, writer and YouTuber and the author of the mystery novel Every Time He Dies. And today I just want to share a pretty typical writing day with you. A pretty typical writing day as both an academic and as a working writer. So right now I'm just going about making my pretty standard morning cup of tea, uh, which is a dandelion chai, and then I add some mushroom powder to it. You gotta have your mushrooms before you start writing. Okay, not that kind of mushroom. And of course I'm adding just a little bit of honey to that as well before I start my day. Just to start off with, I'm gonna walk you through how I actually go about setting up my day on these types of days. But before we get into things, I just have to tell you that this was an exceptionally good cup of tea. So I'm very lucky in that I recently invested in a Cobra Libra color. And as part of the new Kobo, there's a notebook feature. So now I've been doing my time blocking, like I guess digitally, uh, in this way. So... The thing I find really interesting about time blocking is that it keeps you really honest about how much time is actually available to you every day. So obviously like sort of lifey stuff in the morning, walk dogs, breakfast. I am my best in the mornings, which is why my writing session is gonna be from eight till 12, which is a long time. I can appreciate that. But um, I will either work on my novel for that entire time, or I might move from my novel to one other writing project. Uh, and then I'm meeting my writing club for lunch, though that is a bit of a question mark today. I have a feeling people are going to council. Uh, and then I'll do some research, walk the dogs, get ready, and then I have a bar shift tonight. So I'm a sessional academic at the university where I work. And what that means is that I'm a casual employee. So three nights a week, I work at a restaurant as a means of security. Um, also, I kind of think it's maybe a good idea to not have all of your income from one single employer. So naming a project can be really difficult, which is why literally my current project is called Fantasy Novel. I actually don't really have a name for it. So my first novel, Every Time He Dies, was just called The Ghost Book for so long. And now the fantasy novel is just called um, The Fantasy Book. But interestingly, uh, my second book, Constant Companions, it was um, pretty quickly given that name and it was like a really obvious title. Uh, so who knows what the fantasy book will end up being called. But at the moment, I literally have no idea. Editing Tara jumping in here. So I just wanted to clarify that I mentioned my second book there, Constant Companions. So yes, I have finished another book, a speculative fiction book, and I'm currently in the process of querying agents on this title, which is why um, it's not available yet. Okay, so I don't usually do the whole light a candle before you start writing thing because it's maybe um, a little bit too Instagrammable for me, but a friend of mine, I was quite sick last week, and a friend of mine bought me this ghost candle and it smells like apple cider. So good. And um, I freaking love Halloween. So I am gonna light this candle today because I'm vlogging and we gotta make this look a little bit Instagrammable, don't we? Oh, look at that. Oh. The ambience, she said, dripping with sarcasm. The final thing I'll say before I get into today's writing session is that I listen to this music, Deep Cello, when I'm writing my fantasy novel. And how I came across this actually was by listening to an interview with the Australian fantasy author Jay Kristoff. And he mentioned that he's been listening to this while writing his Empire of the Vampire series. <laughs> very goth. So I always stand at the beginning of any writing session. Now this is actually a pretty common practice. Um, some famous authors in history that stood while they wrote were Ernest Hemingway and Virginia Woolf as two that immediately come to mind for me. But I often find that it is nicest to start my writing session in this way. And I usually probably write standing up for 
anywhere from half an hour to 60 minutes, then I usually sit down for a while and then I sort of just repeat this cycle. Uh, because as we all know, sitting is apparently now the new smoking. For a little bit of context, I've been working on this fantasy novel for roughly two years now and I'm approaching the end of the third draft. So I'm very familiar with the novel at this point and yet it's still very much in development. So I just wanted to point out that the Word document is currently 459 pages, 121,494 words, and this means that it takes quite a while to scroll down to the bottom of the document. So the reason why I have put Tuesdays aside specifically just for writing is, well, several reasons, but how it came about was I was talking with my mentor and I shared how I was so jealous of the writing club that Cassandra Clare, Kelly Link and Holly Jackson have together because they meet up, I don't know how frequently, but it seems to be fairly frequently that they meet up and they do their writing together. And I just really loved that idea of a community of writers coming together. But the thing is, I have tried this. So I have gone to shut up and write sessions. So what they are, if you haven't heard of such things, or if you don't have such things in your country, you meet with a group of people, obviously other writers, you write for 25 minutes, you do the Pomodoro technique of writing for 25 minutes, pausing for five minutes for a quick chat, and then you write for another 25. But the idea is because you're all coming together, you are holding each other accountable. There's that public accountability of being in this space with other people. You're probably not going to go on Instagram or TikTok if you're sitting there with another group of writers who have their laptop open and who are also actively writing. But the thing is, I have gone to these sessions and I haven't found them very productive. They work for some types of writing, but they do not they have not supported me when I'm trying to do fiction writing, when I'm trying to be really immersed in a different world, in a different space, and in the head of someone other than myself. Now, these shut up and write sessions, they work perfectly fine if you're doing, say, research, or if you're writing a nonfiction piece that's maybe a little bit more general in nature, as opposed to, say, even an academic paper, I would probably struggle to write in this kind of space because, again, you need a really hyper level of focus in order to do what is very hard work. Uh, so I think that's why shut up and write sessions haven't worked for me. I've done a very similar thing with online writing groups. And I thought that this would work because I'm in my home environment, I'm in a comfortable space. But what I quickly found out was that um, in those particular environments, it was really easy for people to get caught up in the social side of things. So you would need someone to be a really strong gatekeeper of we're writing for 25 minutes. Our five minutes of chat is now up and now we need to go back to writing. But that was not how the sessions were run that I attended. And everybody, I mean, presumably people were happy with it being more social, but that's not why I was there. So then those sort of setups just didn't work for me. So I shared all of this with my mentor who has like really similar thoughts around this whole process and who also has a desire for a writing community. And she said, well, what if we get a bunch of writers together that we know and we set up a private Facebook group. And what we do is every Tuesday, and now obviously there was some discussion around what day this would happen on, but oh, Juniper is coming to join us. Every Tuesday from nine till 12, we'll have a writing session at home in your own space. We log on to Facebook, we post what we're gonna be working on that day. And you know, any questions we might have, five minutes of Facebook texting chit chat, not video call. And then you jump off and you go and do your writing for three hours. And then once the session is over, we go to a cafe, we have a coffee and we talk about how our writing went for that day. And we're only meeting for one hour. <laughs> and we're only meeting for one very strict hour. Oh, you got a kiss. Did you kiss your dog yours? Did you kiss your dog yours? Did you? Did you? Um, <laughs> So that's how these writing sessions came about and we've been doing them for about three months now and they've just been really fantastic. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we're able to keep it going. I think we're past the, um, the probationary period where people are like, yeah, no, this doesn't work for me anymore. So um, 
yeah, it's been a success. So it was around this time that I needed to pause to give the dogs a treat because they were both starting to look rather restless and rather bored and if I wanted to get anything else done I was going to have to distract them in some way. So Sadie got a lick mat and then Juniper got a bully stick and this trick worked quite well. Are you my riding buddy today? Are you my riding buddy today? Who's a good office dog? Hey. So just jumping in here to give you a little riding update. So I started riding at about 20 past 8 and it's now 10 past 10. And so essentially in that hour and 50 minutes, I've written 1,227 words. Now I've got to be honest, I'm not... um super thrilled with that number. That number is a little bit low for me. I tend to um, write quite quickly. Uh, so that, that number does feel a bit low to me. But I am also at the point in the novel, uh, in this particular draft, where I'm drafting a whole new section and I am quickly approaching the 75% mark. So there's lots of story threads that are now coming together. And I think it's because of that, that my pace has slowed because there's a lot of things that I am trying to, like I'm trying to keep the threads of the story alive and I'm trying to make sure I don't drop any of those threads. I'm also trying to make sure I don't introduce anything new um, unless it's connected to a thread and then maybe it'll be like a plot twist or something like that, um, which has happened. But yeah, so it's just interesting different stages of the writing process are different, different parts of the story are different. Um, I do find it's often quick to write, like beginnings are often quick because there's a lot of information you're trying to establish, especially if you're doing fantasy and there's this kind of world building happening. So you intuitively know a lot of things that need to be included. And now that we're getting to the end and I'm trying to tie up a lot of things, the writing is a lot slower because it's also a lot more considered. Also, I checked in with the Facebook chat and we all posted our goals for the day. And I was very glad to hear that we are actually still gonna be catching up with coffee for coffee today. Uh, it'll only be me and one other writing member, um, which is fine, but I'm, um, I'm excited that somebody is still available and free to catch up today because it is kind of nice setting that as reward after the writing session. So as I mentioned, I've been writing for an hour and 50 minutes now on the novel. I am probably going to make some notes around where I want the story to go next so that I can hopefully come back to it tomorrow afternoon. Um, but for now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit because I'm starting to feel a little bit... Um, a little bit fatigued on the story. It's starting to feel a little bit strained now. So I'm gonna swap over and do something else and I'm going to start doing some research and doing some writing on a research paper that's focusing on the grotesque body, um, particularly our grotesque male protagonists. So I'm gonna jump over and start that now. So this is the text that I was reading on this particular day. And what I was doing was reading one chapter that focuses very specifically on the grotesque body. And what I was doing was, of course, uh, developing an understanding of the grotesque body from this particular scholar's perspective, Mikhail Buckton. But I was also looking for any direct quotes, anything that could inform the direction of my argument. And as you can see here, I'm typing out some direct quotes and I'm summarizing what I learned when reading this chapter. It was actually very interesting to revisit this text as this text was very informative to my PhD dissertation, but I was focusing on a very different chapter from this book and I was focusing on the idea of the carnivalesque. So it was quite interesting to come back to the text and then to be focusing on a different section of it and a different aspect of his argument. So now I'm just gonna make some lunch before I meet my friend for a coffee, my writing buddy, and I'm just gonna put together a quick 
grain bowl because I have some avo left over from breakfast that I want to use up. And also I changed my shirt because now it's hot. And yes, I'm putting Brussels sprouts in a grain bowl. I mean, look at those knife skills. Not bad for a rider. So here's a little trick for you. I make my quinoa up the day before and then I heat it in the oven so that it goes nice and crispy. Some spicy spices for my veggies. And now we wait. Are you lurking? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, why are you so cheeky? Hey, why are you so cheeky? So I didn't film myself putting the grain bowl together, but this is it. So quinoa, sweet potato, Brussels sprouts, half an avocado, which is actually quite a bit, uh, spring onion, and some homemade veganaise. So lunch is done and I have half an hour until I have to, I don't have to, until I get to catch up with my friend for a coffee. There is a very short article I've been wanting to read called Unpacking My Library, a talk about collecting. And um, I don't really, it's, I'm not really reading it for anything I think at this point. It's just um, out of pure curiosity that I've heard about this essay. So I might do that and then head for coffee and then take the day from there. Let's be honest, this is always so satisfying. So I'm just pausing here to say that I did not record having coffee with my friend because that would be weird. So cut to post coffee. So I'm just back from having coffee with my friend and I ended up, usually we're really disciplined and we leave at 1.30. So we only have coffee for an hour. But today uh, we were a bit more indulgent, squeaky forward. Today we were a bit more indulgent and uh, we stayed until nearly 2.30. So um, I was going to do another hour of research this afternoon but now that it's nearly 2.30, I'm going to get changed. And I know that this probably seems ludicrous, but I'm going to take my dogs for a walk. Probably now, unless I can distract them in some other way, because they're very used to getting their walks around this time of day. Um, I'll probably walk the dogs, come home, be about three o'clock then. I mean, I might still be able to do like half an hour or an hour of something. I don't know that it'll be writing based. I know I need to respond to some emails. I need to send some emails, but I'll probably do at least half an hour of something. And um, then I might have some quiet time uh, because I've got to go to work at five. I've got to go do the other job at five. So uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit of downtime before I go and do that. Okay, I might go get changed and take these doggies for a walk. So I've just gotten back now from walking the dogs and it's about three past uh, three, 10 past three. And I made a comment before I went for the walk about how um, I'll probably just send an email now, which I will, and then maybe have some downtime before I go in to work. Um, but I just had this thought that people might watch that and be like, oh, you just went out for coffee with a friend, like that's your downtime. And it's, it'd be interesting what other writers are like because there is an element, there is an aspect of me that is definitely um, an extrovert. I have a YouTube channel. I really love public speaking. I'm a teacher, so I am very comfortable and very used to standing in front of people and talking. Um, but I also find social interactions very tiring even when... Um, they're high quality interactions, like they're really interesting conversations. They're really um, like 
mentally stimulating uh, conversations, interesting conversations. And even when those social interactions are with people who I'm really comfortable with and who I like and love, so family and friends, um, it, it doesn't really matter. Just interacting with people is tiring um, because I am ultimately an introvert, even though I have extroverted tendencies. Um, so for that reason, so that's why I was leaning towards doing maybe half an hour of work and then having an hour of chill time before I have to go into my second job where I'll be, um, you know, doing another four to five hours of solid work and lots of face-to-face -face interaction with people. So, um, yeah, that's sort of like, that was my thinking with that. So what I'm going to do now is send... Um, a very important email, though hopefully it won't take me too long to write. And then I'm probably going to spend some time reading um, my book club book. Okay, important email sent, and it didn't take very long at all, which is really good. And um, I actually feel like maybe I do have a little bit of steam left in me. So um, I'm going to do some research type stuff. I couldn't really do any writing right now. I don't think I would sink into anything meaningful. But um, I'm definitely going to do a little bit of research, maybe even just like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then I'll have some downtime before getting ready for work and having a bite to eat and all that kind of stuff. So after I wrapped up that tiny bit of research, I did end up reading my book club book, and I have to say it's been interesting picking up this text because I have just finished reading Persuasion by Jane Austen and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And these two classics were actually much more accessible than I thought that they would be. But moving then onto a contemporary popular genre book has been quite a shift. And I have to say I've just been eating up the pages of this novel and I've been moving through it really quickly, which has been, I have to say, quite satisfying. Alrighty, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching this video and for coming along in what is um, a fairly indulgent writing day, if I'm going to be completely honest. But I do try to have one of these once a week um, during the working week uh, because I am a working writer. So uh, obviously today was a bit of a slower pace in terms of how things were structured. So four hours of writing in the morning, uh, a catch up with the writing group and then in the afternoon a tiny tiny bit of email and about another half an hour worth of work before wrapping things up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I don't usually do vlog style videos um, because I just don't know if they're interesting, if I can make them interesting, um, but you can let me know in the comments. I have pretty thick skin so if you weren't into this video you can let me know. Uh, if you do want any more writing based videos, writing advice based videos, you can of course check out the other videos on this channel or you can go to taraeast.com and dive into the archives. You can also join my email newsletter and when you do I'll send you a free gift as well as an email in your inbox whenever I send an email and that will include a note by me, some recommendations that I've recently enjoyed and think you will too as well as some other tidbits that I only share via email. Alright guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope you did enjoy this video. Now I want you to go and do some writing because the world actually does need more books.